Hi, and welcome to the Big Data Deep Dive with theCUBE on EMC TV. I'm Richard Schlesinger, and I'm joined today by tech industry entrepreneur and Wikibon analyst, Dave Vellante, and Silicon Angle CEO and editor-in-chief, John Furrier, also known collectively as uh, the Cube Guys, and we are very grateful to have you here. Welcome. Yes, good to be here. Welcome Thanks to for EMC having TV. Us. Uh, you guys have had a busy summer, I guess, um, keeping track of everything with going on in big data. Where yeah, have you been? The Cube has been on tour. John, I think we've done almost 10 big data events this year. Yeah, I mean, SiliconANGLE TV has been out uh, going out to the, all the events, and extracting the signal from the noise, and you know that's our passion, that's our mission, and uh, we're excited. To continue the second half of the year. We got a lot of great events, but the world wants to know more about these, this game-changing technology. And, and it's and amazing because it's 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 really gotten a lot of steam in the last year or so as the technology has evolved and the uses, people are thinking about the uses of it. Yeah, I mean, the technology has always been a geeky thing, especially in Silicon Valley and here in Massachusetts and New York, it's expanding. But with big data, it's become not just about the technology, it's about the business impact. And I think that's the one thing that I'm really excited about. And what we're seeing is across the board, every industry is being disrupted by these new technologies. And it's probably one of the most exciting things I've seen in my entire career. And it's going to change the way people look at technology. It, it is going to change the way, and, and it's going to change people's lives and so as you guys know EMC um, has been uh, working on the human face of big data project um, which we're about to roll out uh, actually we're rolling out right now um, and I just thought we would take a quick look at um, a spot that we produced here at EMC TV about the human face of big data what it means to put a human face on big data take a look big data the key to transforming chaos into meaning torrents of information from billions of sources. Data that is unstructured, constant, diverse, complex, but with the potential to change the way we live our lives, enabling us to ask fundamental questions about the world around us and our future, revealing new answers. Big data is changing our relationship with the information we create. Just imagine the possibilities. Whole industries transform. Meet Sebastian, extreme athlete and type 1 diabetic, who uses biometric sensors and analytics to measure and improve his performance. Sebastian is just one of millions, harnessing big data, realizing his power. Become a part of a new generation. Become a part of the human face of big data. I love that spot because it, it, it boils this whole thing down to what we're talking about. Lots of data influencing individuals, changing people's lives. You'll be hearing a lot more about the uh, Human Face of Big Data Project. Basically what we're trying to do is paint a digital picture of the world using human beings as sensors with their cell phones, telling people where they've been and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to be it's, it's going to be fascinating. You'll be hearing about that in the months to come. Um, it's, it, I like to think of it as taking sort of impersonal technology to change a person's life. Um, and it, it's, it's very, a, a d very direct effect. And you guys have seen a lot of that sort of stuff in your travels. Um, where, what is the state of the art here? Where, where, where are we with big data? Well, things How like, much do people really understand about it? Videos like that are inspiring. At the same time, they're intimidating. People are concerned about, you know, what are they going to do with all this data? But I think the reality is, is where we're at is this is a freight train. It's happening. It's going to be ubiquitous. It is becoming a fundamental part of our it's lives. It's going to change your life yeah, one absolutely. way or another. Yeah. Maybe whether you know it or not. It's going to help you uh, in ways that we'll talk about later on. Um, in cities, as, as you guys know, um, a lot of cities are beginning to look at, at, at the potential for big data um, to gather data on what's going on in real time. How, how advanced is that? 
I think, I mean, I think the big data thing really empowers people. You mentioned that earlier. And these new, new people that are going to be emerging out of this next generation allow, are, are empowered to do new things, like the PC revolution that was created by Steve Jobs and, and Bill Gates back in the day. And people are doing two things with big data. They're getting older questions answered faster. And they're allowed to ask, ask new questions and solve new problems that they could never do before. And uh, that's really the most important thing that we're seeing on the impact of business and empowering people. So if you're running, say, a large city, um, you could use um, big data technology and sensors to figure out what's going on in your big city in real time, right? Instrumenting a city. Um, think of instrumenting a building and then taking that to the concept of a city has so much potential in terms of eliminating waste, uh, protecting people, you know, cameras are popping up everywhere. Massive amounts of data are being ingested. Uh, as they say, it's inspiring and it's scary. It's a little scary because you have to make sure that it's handled properly. Well, we, you know, we went down, uh, EMC TV went down to Rio, um, which has done a lot uh, in this area. They're getting ready for the Olympics and so they've they've pretty well wired that city and, you, and, and, and they use it to keep track, again, in real time, that's the key, of what's going on there and they, they, can, they can solve problems quickly, they can get on stuff quickly. Um, and so we went down to take a look at that and uh, here's what we found. coração da cidade do Rio de Janeiro. Funciona sete dias por semana, 24 horas por dia. Aqui nós temos diversas informações, nós temos é, mais de 30 órgãos né, aqui dentro, órgãos do município, né, é, concessionárias de serviços públicos, que são companhia de energia elétrica, companhia de gás, né, a gente tem a, a prefeitura, né, que, é, é, que cuida da cidade, nós temos hoje mais de 560 câmeras só do município do Rio de Janeiro. Então, através delas, a gente consegue detectar qualquer tipo de, de é, problema que haja na via. Né? Nós temos, como eu falei, é, a população, né, através das mídias sociais, nos dando informações também do que está ocorrendo na cidade. É, temos aqui a, a, a mídia nossa local, aqui rádio, TV, jornais, também nos é, alimentando com essas informações. E, e, e essas informações chegando aqui, como nós estamos é, com diversas agências aqui dentro, é, a gente consegue tratar e, de acordo com o tipo de, de acidente ou de ocorrência, a gente manda é, o agente A, B, C ou D. Incidentes é, meteorológicos, né? ou seja um, um acidente de trânsito ou algum outro tipo, um desabamento de prédio, alguma coisa.
Copa do Mundo em 2014 e na Olimpíada de 2016, a, o Centro de Operações, a Prefeitura do Rio estará mais preparada e o Centro de Operações estará mais maduro ainda para receber é, esse grande número de turistas, receber esses, é, esse grande evento que vai ocorrer aqui em 2016. Hoje em dia nós temos muito mais informações sobre, sobre o que está que acontecendo no trânsito da cidade. É, eu tenho orgulho desse Big Date de informações que o Rio de Janeiro tem, porque com isso a cidade flui melhor, o trânsito flui melhor e as pessoas têm uma qualidade de vida melhor. You know, you, you look at all that, all that technology and you think, boy, this will really be put to the test when the Olympics come to town. Uh, but they've got some time to work on it and the technology will improve over, over the years. Let's talk, I mean, let's get down into the weeds just a little bit. Where are people now? What, what, what is going on in this world? Who's doing what? So I think that uh, big data has gone from this hype, this concept, to now it's, it's practical realities of big data. Everybody wants to implement big data because it's bringing competitive advantage. You know, the tagline is data is the new oil. Well, what does that mean? That means that increasingly it's going to be about the algorithms that you write, how you package data, how you distribute data, and how you monetize it that's going to give you competitive advantage. So where people are at today is they're struggling with how to figure out ways to bring in unstructured and structured information and then how to package it and distribute it and actually make money with it. And so John, who have you talked to about that? You know, we've talked to a lot of different people and uh, you know, at Strata Conference and at the Hadoop H-Base Conference in San Francisco, which was kind of the early, kind of the first uh, ever conference of alpha geeks around this new database technology called H-Base, they really focus in on the fact that there's kind of a new way and an old way. And, and that's kind of how people are looking at this. Old way is, uh, you know, the incumbents, the people existing in the market. The new way are the new young kids coming out of college, whether it's a computer science degree or a psychology degree, and truly changing every single opportunity, whether it's a tech geek or a data analyst or a business manager and so big data is kind of changing that and and um so Pardon me, but let's meet some of the people who you've talked to. Who who who'd you bring So, um, we had uh, Alistair Kroll at uh, and Ed Dumbill who run the Stratacom Conference, and we have a clip from them we'll show you now and these guys run those strategies they talk to everyone so here's their perspective on on big data watch this video
Okay, we're back live inside the Cube at the Strata Conference in Silicon Valley where the future was in being invented as we speak in Silicon Valley and from entrepreneurs around the globe. Uh, this is SiliconAngle.tv's and SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the top tech events and extract the signal from the noise and share that with you. We're all open source content. We love it. We love to talk to the smartest people we can find and, and share their knowledge with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and my guest now on this segment are the guy, the founders and the guys. I got a founder. I call you a founder, I guess. The, the guys who run Strata, put it together, the program chairs, Ed Dunbill and Alistair Kroll. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. The first thing, how do you guys feel? Tired, exhausted, excited, all yes, of the above? Absolutely. <laughs> I, we're thrilled because we have another sellout event. You know, last year we sold out about 1,300. This year we're somewhere near 2,500. So it's absolutely thrilling to us to just see the growth of this and feel all the excitement around the show. There's more themes, a lot more live streaming you guys have implemented, but overall just a lot of great content in every direction. I mean, the big data is affecting not just one sector, it seems to be a whole new industry. Um, I compared it to the personal computer industry back in the late 70s, early 80s, where an entire new ecosystem of entrepreneurs and players emerged. It seems to have that kind of vibe here, because it affects everything. Life, society. Uh, talk about the diversity here. Well, the original brief for Strata was that this was going to be about not just big data, but also new interfaces to collect and share information and ubiquitous computing that everyone can get to. And that really changes not just work, but also how we play, how we love, how we learn. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's drawn me to the Strata content um, and the reason I got involved is because big data is really where computers touch people. Right. I mean, that data is so often the, the parts of our lives. We heard someone on Tuesday using big data to anticipate car accidents based on weather forecasts in Chicago so they could deliver the right spare parts to repair houses. Someone else saying, you know, two-thirds of the food that we deliver, fresh fruit and vegetable, gets spoiled in transit because it can't get to the right market. So if you're fixing the speed with which you repair cars and rep replacing the food supply, I mean, those are very human factors. This is no right. longer bits and bytes. And it's that humanizing element of what this stuff can do that's almost almost like a superpower. It's almost a dual conference. You have the geeky conversations, the alpha geeky conversations around, you know, the, the Hadoop and the Greenfields and, and MongoDB and, and all the different Cassandra, so on and so forth, the data warehousing, business intelligence, and then you have this whole application mindset where there's real impact, not just for business, but society. Uh, Ed, what are, what are you seeing out there at that level of, what, is, what are some of the exciting bullet points that you can share with folks out there and how big data is really changing the world? But I think one of the most interesting things as this goes into an organization is that people start off with maybe they'll do a pilot project and then suddenly they find out once they've used Hadoop once for something and built kind of a platform they're able to get out data. Often it's the unexpected things that are really creating value and we're excited that one of the things we talk about alongside big data is data science and the word science is so important because people are experimenting and exploring and making discoveries in their organizations and in the world that they didn't know were there before. So I think a lot of this, um, we're still very early stage, still really feeling things out, still answering the questions of what this is going to do for me, but it's the unexpected things that are definitely the What's the, the most pr value. provocative thing that you've seen here, guys? If you guys can both comment, that'd be great. I want something that you go, wow, that's really provocative. And Alice, you mentioned some of the things you mentioned about the, the, the applications. What's really the most provocative, most so, so there was a, a discussion which sounds very esoteric, but it's actually really, really important. Um, there was a big debate a couple of days ago about whether um, you don't need a hypothesis anymore or a domain expert anymore once you have the data. And there's a great example where they took, you, if you see the movie Moneyball, you got all these scouts who they look for a kid's arm and whether his girlfriend's attractive is an indicator of his playing success. And instead a couple of people show up with, with a spreadsheet and beat all the other teams, right? That's a case where you take a guy who doesn't have domain expertise, but he's good with numbers, can beat a bunch of people who've been doing it all their lives. And so some people claim that the importance of being able to, of domain experts, to be an expert in your field, goes away once you have enough information. The data beats expertise. That's a really, really threatening thing for everybody who's got a career where they're a domain expert. Because it means that someone with a spreadsheet and the right data can beat you. And you guys have a strategy with Strata. Obviously, we love the data scientist workshop. We need educational need. What's going on in the market? What is needed or what's going on that people can go to? What resources are you seeing? 
We're doing several things. I mean, you know, we one of our big jobs for this conference is to try and make sense of the marketplace right now. Um, I spent, you know, a lot of January writing a lot of uh, material about exactly where everybody sits and how they stack up and what's real. Um, I think one of the other really important things coming through this year is going to be the increased importance of visualization. You talked about the skills gaps, and what we want to be able to do is give non-mathematically trained people the skills to be able to have a fingertip feel for the data. So it's not just about boring old dashboards. Um, tablet technology is absolutely vital in this, yeah, that people yeah. can see the data, then they can stick their finger in it, move it around, get that dynamic, which is what data scientists have built into their gut, but we want that um, you know, so business people can have that too. We're also looking at geographic expansion, so hopefully we'll have some news confirmed pretty sh shortly about China and London to add to this. So we're very excited. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, program chairs from Strata, Ed Dunville, Alistair Kroll, great guys. You should follow them on Twitter, find out where they are, just go on Google search, go to O'Reilly, their blog is fantastic. These guys are expanding. This is a real, real game-changing uh, trend. Great to be part of it. Um, I'm really psyched for you guys. Congratulations. John, you know, you said it while you were while you were talking out there. This is game changing, and uh, it'll it'll uh, it'll give power to people who may not have had as much power. Data equals equals power, right? I mean, I think this is an opportunity. When you have this kind of disruption in a way that changes businesses, and this is what big data does. It's not only a technical innovation, it's just a, as an enabler, disruptive enabler, but it's also on the business front. So, you know, the role of a data scientist isn't the geek anymore. It's the person who's an analyst, the CEO, it's the, it's the manager. Yeah, he talked about, Kroll talked about uh, uh, giving information to people who are not necessarily mathematically trained, which I responded to because it makes it more accessible. And so, that is going to be a game I mean, every, Everyone can be and improve the business. So think about it. Someone in a business could actually make a material impact to that business using big data and not having to be a PhD or a math geek. Well, That's he, the promise of big data and that you see an improvement, you can move on it. And now the technology is in place to do that. And there's a really important point here in that we think something that we've been tracking at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon is big data practitioners, we believe, are going to create more value than the suppliers of big data technology. Well, what that means is that you're going to see a whole new set of use cases and applications and value creation that we've never seen before in the tech business. So we've been talking about cutting costs and doing more with less for years in the technology business. But now we're talking about adding bottom line productivity, saving lives, big picture things that are going to be you know, dramatically changing the world. You know, it's interesting. You guys are excited about it. Everybody, everybody's pretty excited about it. It's exciting stuff. And we've really just touched the tip of the iceberg uh, here. But we'll be back. We have more installments of the Big Data Deep Dive coming up, so stay tuned to the conversation with my new best friends from theCUBE on EMC-TV.